just want a quick update on the last three picks. Um, in the fifth, we took Sean Clifford, quarterback, Penn State. Um, then kick back in the fifth again, Dontavian Wicks, wide receiver from UVA. And then uh, in the sixth, uh, Carl Brooks, D-tackle from Bowling Green. Um, just briefly on all three guys, and I'll open up for questions. Um, Sean is a highly accomplished uh, quarterback at Penn State. Uh, I think he's 31-14 as a starter. I think he brings um, you know, just a lot of experience to our room. I think he's an upgrade to our, our overall roster that way. Uh, Wicks is a, um, a kid who had a ton of production in 2021, a lot of upside, um, and there's an athletic complement that goes along with his um, his skill set that we really liked. And then uh, Carl is a intriguing kid that, uh, as a versatile defensive lineman, that we think um, is going to add some some real depth and competition to the D line room. So, with that, I'll open it up to questions. With hey, Carl, Carl um, with with uh, Sean. Like you guys, obviously, when you had Aaron, you drafted a quarterback maybe for a different reason, yeah. a different job. What's what's the backup's job now? That's a that's a pretty broad broad based question. I think um, is obviously it's to bring uh, the intelligence that, that that this kid has and um, just being a really good fit. I think it, both in that room, but then in our locker room too, because. Um, the kid's got some gamer to him, which we really liked, and he's <clears throat> his personality when he was here really came through, and I just think he's going to be a really good fit, the person as much as, as he is a player, too. With Carl, you look at his numbers, and they're pretty damn impressive. Correct. It's also yeah. Mac. How do you evaluate how much of that is what he can do projectable to this level, and how much of it is, is Mac offensive player? Well, that's, it's a little bit like the conversation with, you know, you know, when we drafted Christian last year and we took, you know, Tucker this year, it's the, the tape still is the tape. And what he uh, was able to display, even against the Mac, and not to knock the Mac, but I, there's times you turn on the tape, he was a man amongst boys. And when you see um, players from non Power Five or F, you know, FCS schools, you want to see them dominate. And you can put on the tape and see that kid dominate in stretches. With Clifford, there's. There's a reason these guys are going in later rounds, and yeah. then there's usually some compensatory quality that you think they have that gives them a chance. What's his? I think, well, I mean, I, I believe, and I believe he's the all-time um, at Penn State between yards and touchdowns, and he's played in big games. That kid coming into the environment in Lambeau, it's not going to be too big for him. And I think that that experience factor, along with some of the moxie that, that he has as a guy, uh, you know, to me, it's a it's a culmination of of who he is, not one specific aspect that way. Back to back to Brooks, um, it's, it's going to be a totally new position for him. Um, I guess going back to Ryan's question about watching film, uh, how do you critique a guy who's you know playing on the edge in college, yeah. but you're going to see him inside? Well, and that's not to say that you know Joe and his crew won't do some different things with them, some different packages. But I think what he is able to do is, you know, um, it's just kind of like our offensive linemen. The guys that are versatile end up, you know, having more value and, and play more for us. And I think he presents the same sort of, um, you know, D lineman uh, from that sense. With Licks, his 2021 numbers were a lot better than his 2022 yep. numbers. What, explain, from your perspective, what caused that and why was that not maybe necessarily an issue for you? I mean, I think that's a little bit of a question for him. Um, you know, I think there's a variety of things. There was a staff change there um, and how he's utilized. Maybe that goes a little bit into it. Um, I just know that when you watch the 21 tape, it's, there's a significant difference. And at this point in the draft where you're taking a, um, you know, a player like that, well, that's what we're hanging our hat on. Milt, no, what's it like upstairs? So many picks here on Saturday. Well, yeah. How's that affect what you guys are doing? It's a beehive right now in a, in a good way. Um, it's it, you guys have heard me say it before the years in Baltimore, you know, we, as many picks as you can get as many plate appearances you can get. If you're going to bat 300 bat 300 with 13 picks versus seven. So um, but it's a lot of fun right now. And there's a lot of a lot of activity and we still have shoot one more pick here and then four more in the seventh. And it's a chance to add, you know, the, the competition and really 
raise the floor of our locker room. And I think that ultimately is what, you know, what we're going to be able to accomplish here uh, back into day three. Sean was, Sean was the, I think, 11th quarterback drafted yep. in this draft. What's yep. it been like to, to see this run on quarterbacks knowing that the, the room, the depth chart is sparse coming in the draft? And yeah. did that kind of create some, some urgency to go get him? Um, yes and no. I will say this, that um, in defense of, of, of Clifford, that we, we got him in a good spot where we valued him. And um, so from that standpoint, um, we're very pleased, you know, to be able to add him. Well, you've, you've known Goody a long time. You knew what needs you had coming yeah. into this draft. It looks like you've been able to marry filling some holes mm -hmm. with guys that you really like. What's the, what's the balancing act there, and how do you feel like you guys have done that through these first five? I, yeah, and I, I think, you know, Brian does a tremendous job of staying, and you've You've probably heard him say the word process more than you can, you know, you could count, but it genuinely has been an unbelievable process. And through that, you know, the, our, some of our needs have, have married, and it, it married the way the board was. And, and you heard people for months talk about how, what a great draft this was for tight ends. And we, you know, quite frankly, we had a need there. And so it's been, Sometimes it's it works out that way. It doesn't always, but it's been it's been good to see. Was it, was it hard for you guys yesterday? It would be easy for you to stay where you were at 42 when those first two tight ends went earlier in yeah. the second round, and you knew you needed a couple of those guys, and you ended up getting two of them. Correct, and it, it much like when we were talking about with Clifford, it fell it fell very well for us in terms of the way our, our board was stacked.